Hello, my name is Charlotte Bedford, and I'm going to be walking you through PyMole tutorial for Windows. Um, we're going to be looking at specifically hemoglobin today, and we're going to just start off with some mouse controls. By now, you should have downloaded, and you should have the educational license use only, so now we can get started. Let's follow along on the sheet that you probably have in front of you. Go to File, Get PDB. PDB stands for Protein Data Bank File. Um, the PDB is, you can also find any PDB um, that is available online. Um, if you look up a molecule of interest and type in PDB afterward, you should be able to come up with the national um, website or data bank. So from here, I'm going to put in the code 1HHO. This, is, this shows two of the four tetramers of an oxygenated hemoglobin molecule. So to move this around, you can click and drag with your mouse. Just play around with the rotation of it. Then that goes side to side. To move your molecule side to side, you're going to hold the control key, click, and drag your molecule. You can go anywhere. It'll stay in the same plane. All right, now to highlight certain sections, you can go down to selecting and select what you want to select. But for now, let's do atoms. You hold the shift key and make a box of any size. It selects, has a little selection highlighted over here. You can also see that up here, if you don't have the sequence up, that will be very useful for the future. Um, so right now, go to display. Make sure sequence is checked. Once you have that, you continue. Scrolling on your mouse increases and decreases the visibility of your molecule. And by holding shift and control at the same time, you can zoom in and out, getting closer and farther away. Now for the names of different sections that I'm going to be referring to, we have up here is called the command panel. We don't typically use this because we're not going to be putting any code in directly. We're just going to be using the prompts that we have up here. Down here, I'll be referring to this as the mouse matrix. This controls the mode that you're on and what you are selecting. So we are going to be using the mouse mode three button viewing, not editing. We are going to be selecting either atoms or molecules. Then we have the display center, which is over here. That's what primarily most of the display settings are going to change. We have the names panel that has all of your options for the display, what shows um, and what is showing. So that's how we're going to rename sele selections that we make and color them different colors. So over here we have A, which stands for action. This is going to be where you can delete selections. You can delete what you've downloaded. Um, you can also show, which is right next to it. You can show different side chains in the surfaces, which we're going to get to later. Hide. You can hide everything of your molecule, which still you can select things. But right now, I want to show everything as a cartoon. OK, so I went ahead and recolored some things just so that you, can see, so that you guys can see everything a little bit better. Um, but right now, we're going to be working on just the user interface part. So this, I don't necessarily like the contrast between the black and the color of my molecule itself. So we're going to focus on display, particularly right now, background, color space, quality, and grid, and orthoscopic view. Grid and orthoscopic view go together in this exercise. So start with background. And you can see that we can change it from white to light gray to gray and black. So gray is still a little off. I don't really like that. So I think we're going to go with a light gray is nice. We can also see what a white looks like. Let's keep the white. So now you know what background does. Color space is just the default color selection palettes for your entire molecule. So right now it's on RGB. 
but we can easily go to the default for publications, which is a little more muted, and we can then go to PyMole, which is a little brighter, I think. All right, we can stay on that and go to quality. This just either enhances or um, reduces the 3D act aspects of your video. So here I have the minimum quality but maximum computer performance. So things are going to be a little faster for my computer this way. But as you can see, the edges are really rough and it doesn't look as nice. But maximum performance or maximum quality gives me very nice shiny round alpha helices with very well defined molecules. But usually you can go right in between for a reasonable quality. Okay, so I just had to restart with the default, which is fine if you feel like you have to go back and restart. You can easily just go back, go to all, delete everything, and insert your PDB file just as it was. So now we're going to go to file, get PDB, now put in one HHB instead of one HHO. So you can see that they're kind of mushed together, and that's not what we want. So we want to separate these two molecules. So we can go to Display and Grid. Grid is going to separate them on the screen into two, so we can go by Object. As you can see now, you can see both of them, but it kind of moves in a strange way. So we're going to go back to Display and click Orthoscopic View. So now they're the same size, we can zoom out, but they're not really in the same orientation. So we can go to Plugin, Alignment, and we're going to align one to one. So this, as you can see, now they're both in the same orientation and we can easily see where everything is. All right, so we're going to go back and put in two new PDB files after we've deleted everything that we did before, making sure that display, we have grid by object and orthoscopic view activated. So we can input one A3N, and we can input one GZX. Then we can go back to plugin alignment one to one. There we go. Now we have an aligned, or we have two aligned hemoglobin molecules. Over here is the deoxygenated state or the T state. And over here we have the oxygenated state or the R state. Okay, so we are going to start off with locating the F and E helices. So it's going to be like a sandwich. As you can see here, there are kind of two helices right on either side of each heme molecule. So we can scroll along the sequence and we're going to find 87. We're going to rotate this molecule so we see it. I'm going to select from around 94 to 81. And we are going to go ahead and label this by going to Actions, Rename Selection, F Helix 1. So now unselect and make sure this is unselected and go back to 94 to 81. This should be the same region on the second molecule. So go back to selection, actions, rename selection, F helix 2. Deselect. And make sure you're selecting atoms down here. So from here all the way back to 56. So 76 to 56. This rename selection, E helix 1, deselect, 
I'll go from on the second molecule directly underneath it. Go from that same 76, 56. And you can see that it's the same selection, rename selection, E helix 2. So I'm going to go through, make the F helix cyan. and the E helices green, just for fun. So now what you are going to want to do is go to show side chain sticks for all of them. All right, now if we rotate this molecule and zoom in a little bit, move it around, rotate it this way a little bit, and back to get a better view of these histidine five-membered ring side chains. So you can see that the distal histidine up here on the E helix over here is closer to the iron molecule in the center of the heme. And the distal hist uh, the proximal to histidine down on the bottom is closer to the iron in the uh, T state without the oxygen present. This will result in a conformational change for the whole molecule, but that is something we can see in greater detail once we label and color all of the four quadrants, the alpha-1, beta-1, um, alpha-2, and beta-2 sections of each. So from here we can zoom out all the way, go back to the center of the molecule, and we're going to start selecting each section. So make sure that you can see four clearly defined sections, and we're going to go ahead and go down to selecting molecules. So. Make sure nothing is selected over here besides the two molecules you already have down. And just click on a section. Now we're going to rename this selection alpha 1.1 because this is the first molecule and it's the first alpha section. So then deselect, select that same section on the second molecule, and we're going to rename this selection alpha 2.1, second molecule first alpha. So we're going to go through, we're going to make sure this is deselected so we don't edit that selection anymore, and go to the right on this molecule, this will be alpha 2. 1.2 to be specific. Select, select the same on the other side. and this will be alpha 2.2. Now deselect, we're going to go down to the bottom two and rename those both beta 1 and beta 2 respectively. Right, so now we can go through and color all of these. So the way we do that is go to color. Let's make the alpha 1s red alpha 2s, green, beta 1s, blue, and beta 2s, yellow. All right, so we have four clear and distinct sections. If we want to get rid of these side chains, we can. We don't necessarily have to. Um, but if we wanted to, we would go to each of these selections and go hide, side chains, hide. And we've gotten rid of those side chains. And now we have four lovely colored 
tetramers. Now, this is still a little bit difficult to see the conformational change going from deoxy to oxygenated state. So what we can do is show, and then we can go show surface. That just took a little while to load, but we can move this around and see down right in the middle, we can see this kind of expansion opening up in the middle when there's oxygen present. So that's because the, when the oxygen is bound, it kind of contracts these four quadrants and opens up the middle. So we can see this also by scrolling using your mouse and seeing the outline of the section. You can see there are clear changes that go along from the change from T state to R state. So here you can see it's more open, this is more closed, keeping that oxygen tightly bound, and you can just move this molecule around trying to see where you see those changes the most. Lastly, we're going to go down to a section where you can see a heme with oxygen. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oop, not that much. <laughs> Just enough so that you can see the surface of the molecule. So right here, see the opening and how it's changed. So you see this, this surface has gotten a little bit tighter around the heme, and you can see the oxygen clearly right here. You can also see in this plane, the, if I can rotate it a little bit, there we go. You can see the, they do change positions also, but the iron specifically is out of the plane up top on the, in the T-state molecule, and it is in the plane being dragged down by this oxygen. And these are also stabilized by the side chain interactions, specifically with the proximal and distal histidines on the E and F helix for each, making a little bit of a sandwich, stabilizing the molecule, allowing for the oxygen to travel through the body.